Not that long ago, Alan, Northwestern is bringing in a very talented four-star wide receiver named Jordan Mosley. Yeah, they uh, did really well here late in this class with two wide receivers, him and Calvin Johnson, uh, two guys from, from the South. Mosley, a guy who can take the top off of a defense but can also go up and catch the football and go get it. Runs great routes, and so they're showing that they can leave the footprint, go down south, and pick up wide receiver talent. You see there are three four-star players right here in this Northwestern class. Just for some perspective for you, that's as many four- and five-star players that Northwestern has brought in the last four years combined. Pat Fitzgerald, fresh off a new long-term contract extension to keep him in Evanston till the year 2077, joins us. Uh, Pat, we didn't have you on on the first signing day. I forget what the reason why. It was something like a few hours away from competing for a conference championship or something. Do you remember? Yeah, we were a little busy, Mike, and it's great to be on with you. Um, if I make it to 2077, I'll be 103, <laughs> so uh, I do appreciate the uh, Freudian slip there, but... Fired up, uh, very thankful, and uh, really excited about the future and adding these great pieces to our to our uh, football family. Well, it's a nice group that you are bringing in, and we know people want to know about one name in particular. We can't ask you about him right now uh, for legal reasons because paperwork has not been signed. But let me ask you more of a, a broader question. It looks like this will be three of the last four years that you've brought in in the transfer portal a big-named quarterback, specifically what is the broad philosophy you have right now about QB transfers coming in? Well, I think it's more general about, uh, you know, the state of college football and recruiting, you know, as we've created this transfer portal, it's definitely a, a factor in, in your 85 scholarships. And you've got to look at, you know, where not only is your graduating class at, where you're at a, cl a, a class maybe a year down the road or two, but also, you know, competitively right now, what pieces – do we feel like we need to add to continue to be at a championship level? And so that's, that's every position that we evaluate that we've got, uh, you know, a, a great, uh, great locker room culture. And so the young man's got to fit who we are. They've got to fit, you know, the wildcat way in which we do things. And, and we've been very fortunate that, you know, maybe we didn't get a young man out of high school, but uh, you know, they end up being uh, still the right fit after we go through the process and, and we end up being a destination for them. Let me talk about a quarterback you did get out of high school that you can talk about. Brendan Sullivan, what stands out about him? Well, Sully's on campus. He's already reported. And uh, as you watch through this highlights, you know, number one, he's a winner. He can make all the throws. He's really athletic. Uh, hey, right on cue here. I should be on TV or something. But, you know, he can really run. Uh, and, uh, you know, you look at getting his teams to a championship level and getting him back there again this year. Um, you know, I try to talk him into staying at home uh, to compete for the championship. But, you know, he was he was uh, really thankful for everything uh, that he went through in his high school career. And uh, here we're a couple of weeks away and I'll be able to watch him throw. I haven't even had a chance to see him throw yet, but uh, he's been working his tail off along with our other three early enrollees. There's another big name that you added recently, wide receiver Jordan Mosley. What do you like about him? Jordan's explosive, you know, uh, a young man that can really, I think, take the top off of, of a defense. And when you watch some of these highlights here, you're going to see most of them are touchdowns, right? And we, we understand where we need to go and what we need to do offensively as we continue to build this championship level program. And that's to make more and more explosive plays offensively. You, you look at our numbers in particular from last year, you know, nobody grinded out drives better than we did. And that that's, that's a testament to our coaches and our players, but we've got to make more explosive plays by creating better one-on-one -on -one matchups, and then our guys making more explosive plays, and, and he's one of those guys that we're excited about for the future. You know, last year on this day, we were talking to you about Peter Skaronsky, and the true freshman made quite an impact in just his first year. When do you, as a head coach, during a calendar year when it comes to a true freshman, when do you start to get an idea of, this guy's ready to make an impact right away? Well, we had a, a need, you know, is, is um, Rashawn uh, and, and fully supported by all of us, decided to opt out. And now he's going to end up being potentially a top 10 pick, which was ended up being a great decision by him and his family. Uh, you, you know, we had a need and then we opened up competition. And to Peter's credit, um, you know, he, he was in, in competition with some other guys on our roster and he won the job. And uh, like Rashawn, who won the job his freshman year, uh, the only way you're going to improve and get better is through reps. And, and to Peter's credit, he did. So, 
you know, Dave and Sarah and everybody over at, at Maine South prepared Peter incredibly well. And, and he came in here competing right away and won the job. And what a great first campaign. And, you know, he's doing well in winter workouts. So let's see how it goes for the Encore next year. You know, back to this year's class, you could practically ride your bike to Lake Forest. So what did you like about recruiting Mac Uline? Mac Uline was, uh, you're, you're going to see him blow, a bunch of big hits here. Can really run, really physical player. And, and I think it's just scratching the surface of what he is going to become uh, at, the, at the collegiate level. Uh, but really athletic, really a great change of direction. And uh, again, a great powerhouse program here in the Chicagoland area with the Lake Forest Scouts. Coach Spaggs, he does a great job, and, and their whole their whole program does a terrific job. So uh, low maintenance, I, you know, that was another thing that was great about Mac. You know, he was uh, – well, we'd, we'd be – I'd be out on the grill in the summer, and we'd be sharing uh, FaceTimes, and <laughs> he'd be showing me what he was grilling. So a lot of fun. He was uh, kind of the, the, the guy that got the whole class together and – during COVID, when I'd be sneaking out to play some really bad golf, I'd be FaceTiming with those guys and having some fun. So um, I'm really excited to have him here. He early enrolled, um, you know, like Jacob Gill and, and Anthony Tyus III and, and, uh, and, and Sully. So, you know, we got those four guys going through workouts right now, and, and uh, they're learning and growing and hopefully having a lot of fun. Well, Pat, congrats on the division championship this past year. Congrats on this uh, class. And congrats once again on disappointing just about every NFL front office by choosing to stay in Evanston. Uh, I don't want to hear that. I'm just ecstatic to be here and really (laughs) proud of our guys, what we did in 20. And couldn't be more excited about the future and especially this year's team coming back. I think although we graduate some unbelievable players, we've got really good young talent. These guys are championship born and championship bred, and we're going to just continue to work at that level. And find a way to get better this year. So thanks a lot. Stay healthy and safe and go Cats. Thanks, Pat. I mean, can he pivot away from talking about himself (laughs) or what? Uh, By the way, I want to be clear. We did want to ask him about the big transfer. His name is Ryan Halinski. He started as a true freshman at South Carolina. He's come over here. But again, specifically the paperwork hadn't officially been done at the time, so we couldn't do it. But it's been reported he's coming to Northwestern. He's going to be a big deal. Alan, the thing is he's not alone among the quarterbacks as we talked to him about another guy. Yeah, Brendan Sullivan is a guy that hopefully Northwestern will be able to develop for those four years. And a kid who uh, had an outstanding career at Davison. It didn't end the way we wanted it to, of course, with COVID taking away his ability to play for a state championship this year. But he took that program from not being a real powerhouse in Division I to back-to-back state title game appearances. And Coach mentioned his athleticism. He was a really outstanding basketball player. Thought he might get recruited there for a minute. So between that athleticism and the winning pedigree, I think he's going to be a great fit. I think one of the things we're seeing with Coach Fitzgerald, particularly at the quarterback position, is he wants to stay in that championship mode. You heard him say it many times, competing for championships and having a championship-style team. And having a quarterback that can get you there is so important to be able to do it. And Mike, you talked about three of the last four years, he's entered into the transfer portal to bring a veteran guy in to help him. And he's done it once again. And it's going to pay dividends. You have to continue to develop those young guys. But if you want to compete for championships, you need to have a proven commodity under center that can help you lead your team. He also talked about becoming more explosive. So he also addressed several of the needs in this recruiting class. But number one has got to be at the quarterback position. And how would you say compete for championships? I mean, they're so consistent in recruiting. They rank in the 50s, and they're usually 11 or 12 in the conference, and yet they've been to Indianapolis twice. It's really extraordinary, the success they've had. And think about it. The December show that we had, today's show, we're talking about how the West has become a better recruiting division and yet Northwestern stays in that 50 range, stays in 11, 12 range, and goes to Indianapolis. You know, one other thing I think is worth repeating, we, we've talked about this in the past, is the facilities. We, we all were in awe with the, with the Northwestern facility. I know that Pete Thamel, one of our contributors at BTN, called it the best facility in the country. And what do we always say right away? It's really going to help recruiting. And I don't really think facilities help recruiting all that much, and I think this is a little a bit of evidence of that. It helps your day-to-day operation. There's a lot better reasons to go to Northwest than yeah. a pretty building, right? You've got the fact that they're winning championships, competing for championship. It's a great school. And so every time a new facility comes up, I think we've got to slow down when we think that it's going to make a real impact in recruiting because facilities don't usually make an impact in recruiting. 
Right, the whole two division titles in three years might be helping more than anything else for Pat Fitzgerald.